Look at that comet go. That's Comet Swan getting close to the pillars of creation. And this is Comet Lemon setting behind the trees. And this is a composite which I thought looked pretty cool. I predicted October 20th to be the best time to observe three comets in the night sky and I got close. On October 17th, just three days earlier, I was able to observe and image two different comets at the exact same time, Comet C2025A611 and Comet C2025R2 Swan. I drove what felt like 40 hours from the suburbs of Boston to Ipswich, Massachusetts, about 40 miles from my home in an attempt to capture both Comet Lemon and Comet Swan. I met with my friend Mark on a football pitch, I believe the Americans call it a soccer court, and then my friend Nathan joined us with his AT72 ED for some visual observations of both comets and we were able to see both of them. Comet Lemon looked great, Comet Swan is not as impressive, but it was there. To locate Comet Lemon, we looked northwest. We used Arcturus to help us find Comet Lemon in the sky, and it was fairly easy to find for both our computerized scopes and Nathan's visual scope. The comet looked great visually through the telescope and through my camera gear. Unfortunately, the sky just wasn't dark enough, and the atmosphere just wasn't thin enough to make this comet a naked eye object. So I wasn't able to observe it without a telescope. And this is my shot of Comet Lemon. And the framing could have been better, but I kind of had a panic moment because I had some technical issues, including one time where I accidentally plugged in my USB-C cable into my USB-A port on my mini PC and shorted the thing. And I thought that was the end of everything. But luckily everything started back up and I was able to continue imaging. I captured 115 images at 30 seconds each, so the total integration time wasn't as long as my October 1st image that we see here, but I was hopeful because I was in a relatively darker skies and the comet was much brighter. And I followed a few tutorials by this YouTuber named Nastronomy. You should follow him if you're not already and check him out on Patreon and buy me a coffee. And yes, I do watch my own videos, especially the tutorials because they're great ways to remember what I did to get results that I want. And this is the resulting image of Comet Lemon. Keeping in mind that the image from October 1st and October 17th were taken with the exact same gear, exact same telescope camera and field of view, but Comet Lemon just looks so much bigger and brighter. But of course it also made it much harder to get the entire tail. I have no idea how long the tail was because I only had an hour to shoot and I wanted to just get as much of the Comet core and its immediate tail as possible. I also had my Canon T5i out with my Samyang 135mm lens shooting at f2 at between 4 and 6 second exposures, admittedly too high of an exposure, and I was able to stitch together this time lapse. It definitely doesn't look as good as Comet Suchinshan at this last year, which was just a mind blowing comet. The Canon shots didn't have any special processing done to it, just some small adjustments in Lightroom, and I'm overall pretty happy with it. And this is what my friend Mark captured with his Ascar 65 PHQ that same night. Link to his astrobit image is in the description below, so if you're curious about the rest of his capture properties, look there. Then I pointed everything to the south to Comet Swan. And on the 17th, it was scheduled to be near M16 and M17, the Eagle Nebula and the appropriately named Swan Nebula. Comet Swan was much dimmer and it was directly over the light dome of Boston, so it was much harder to see. But with the imaging gear, I was able to get this shot with M16 in view. M17 was a little too hard to get in my field of view without messing things up. And overall, I got 56 good images at 60 seconds each. And then when I stacked everything together, I got this. And then when I did a little bit of processing, this is what I got. And this comet was extremely hard to process because the tail was so faint. I spent quite a while trying to get the tail out, but after some stacking and some processing, this is the best image that I could come up with. And I think that over the next weeks to months, I'll probably process this at least another dozen times trying to see if I can get more of the tail out. And I didn't take any frames in narrowband, so everything here is true color as seen through my telescope and camera, including the Eagle Nebula. And as you know, I love time lapses, so I put everything together into this neat little time lapse showing the movement of the comet over an hour. And then I took my finished comet and my finished nebula, and I made sure everything lined up properly, so that meant manually registering the frames, which took longer than I would like and I made a better time lapse. This actually came out much better than I expected, but I do wish I got the tail a little bit more because then the movement would have looked a little bit cooler. If you've taken images of either of these comets, I would love to see them. Join our Discord server where we have a growing community of astronomers and astrophotographers, and we'd love to have you. 
This image is from a fellow Discord member, Amelia, which shows the excellent framing of the comet in between M16 and M17. Really nice work with this one, and her blue sky profile is linked below. And if you want to learn how I process these images, I have a few videos on how to process these comets in Serial and Pixinside, so check those out. Links are in the cards and in the description of this video. Comet Lemon is expected to get brighter until the end of the month before it disappears around mid-November, so there's still time to catch Comet Lemon if you haven't yet. And I'm hoping I can get one more shot at it because it's gonna get brighter. Although it is moving away from us now, so maybe I'll get more of the tail. Now the next brightest comet to aim for is Comet K1 Atlas. It's technically past its brightest point, but it will be at perigee or, its or at its closest point to Earth in January 2026, only about 60 million kilometers, which in an astronomical sense is actually really close. So it may be a good time to see if you can catch another comet zooming past Earth. It's not expected to be as bright as Lemon or Swan, so it may be harder to image and harder to process, but it'll still be around mag 11 or 12, I believe, in January, so it's still within range for any telescope that you have, any imaging telescope you have, including sea stars and dwarfs, and see what you can get. I will most definitely be trying as well. And let's not forget Comet 3i Atlas, our interstellar traveler. More on that soon. Happy comet hunting and clear skies.